Let's begin here today with a reminder that narcissism is all about one person wanting to maintain control over another and then a whole host of other characteristics come along with it. And as, as part of their need for control, narcissists have no problem whatsoever in playing manipulation games with you. They can be very demeaning and they want to create a sense of confusion. They want to make sure that you know that they're in charge, they have the final word. And so there's all sorts of ways that they can mess with your head and in doing so, keep you in the inadequate or the inferior kind of position. So today I want to go through eight of the very common uh, manipulation games that narcissists will play with you. And, and as you're onto this, then you can be able to spot it and learn not to get sucked into all of the junk that goes along with it. Now, the first game I want to mention to you, and I, the reason I'm putting this first is it's one of those that has uh, an overlay on all of the other things that I'm going to mention to you. The first thing that a narcissist will do is they will dehumanize you. In healthy relationships, we want to try to remember that that person in front of you is someone who is a real individual with real perceptions and needs and legitimacy. They deserve respect and honor. And the narcissist, if they start thinking in that direction, it's like, no, I lose my power if I hold that other individual in high regard or if I see them as being my equal. And so what they'll do is they make sure that you know that you're not that kind of person. Um, they don't see your feelings as legitimate. They don't see your perceptions as worthy. And so they'll go into this dehumanizing process with all sorts of insults, name calling, character assassination, undermining, and that's a, it's a very important thing for them to do uh, because it keeps you off balance and you're over there trying to scramble, proving yourself to them. And it's like, yeah, I like it when you try to prove yourself to me. That, and that means that you're, uh, you're beholden to me and that's part of their game. They dehumanize you and try to take away your legitimacy as a regular person. Now, a second thing, a second game that they do is they do the blame shifting game. Conflict is part of any kind of relationship, whether it's work or uh, extended family friendships or elsewhere. Uh, we're not all going to think the same and we're going to sometimes differ and sometimes we create annoyance and frustration with each other. Okay, fair enough. In healthy relationships, you sit down and I sit down and we say, well, let's talk about that so that we can come to a nice sweet middle ground, not the narcissist. Uh, whenever there are conflicts and differences, they're thinking, okay, who are we going to blame? And who's at fault here? Because it sure isn't me. And so they'll go into uh, all sorts of efforts to make sure that you know that, uh, that you're the cause for all of the problems. And they can have emotional outbursts at you. You know, the how dare you treat me this way. Uh, they may try to take the moral high ground. It's like, well, I would never do anything like you. Uh, they can actually uh, slander you and say all sorts of ugly things. And then they'll do the scapegoating kind of thing if there's a problem rather than saying, well, why don't we each take a look at where we, uh, we all fit in with this? It's like, no, there's someone to blame here. It's you, and I'm going to put it all onto you. And so in the blame shifting kind of category, they look for a scapegoat. They look for someone who uh, can carry the burden of the problem, and it's inevitably going to be you. It certainly isn't going to be them because they have too high and lofty of a view of themselves. Now, a third uh, a manipulation that narcissists very commonly play is what we call the word salad game. Now, the goal of the word salad game is to create confusion. They want to discredit you, and they don't want to, to, to really deal with issues straight up. And so it goes like this. Let's suppose that somebody has had some sort of irresponsibility, and you're trying to call them out on it. And so instead of uh, talking about that subject and saying, tell me what it is you want me to know, they may start arguing about non-essential details. Well, yeah, but I told you this and this was that, and it's not really what you were getting into. Or maybe they'll say, well, why don't we talk about your deficiencies? And so they can go into that, or they may start talking about history. It's like, well, you're telling this about me, but I remember four years ago, this, that, and the other happened. And do you remember when you were talking to this person over here and they get you going over there? Or they can cite how other people may think, well, you're saying this, but this person over here uh, says this. Do you know what, uh, what this person's background is? And they try to get you diverted off of here. 
And then about 15 or 20 minutes later, you're thinking, now what was the original topic? That's the word salad game. They just try to jumble up all sorts of irrelevant details in there, or uh, they take your focus off of the original topic. That's how it works, and it creates confusion. Now, this leads to a fourth one, and this is one that I'm sure you're quite common with, and that's the gaslighting game. And that takes this word salad thing a little bit further. Gaslighting, and, and I've had some other uh, videos on this topic, is an attempt to distort your understanding of reality. Now, when a person is gaslighting you, they'll, they'll call into question what is true and what is accurate versus what is not. And you'll hear the narcissist say things like, I didn't say that, or uh, I did say that, but not in the context that you took it. Or they may uh, say, well, uh, you specifically told me this, and I was just responding on that, when in fact you're thinking, did I say that? Or it may be that they'll tell you half-truths, and they'll say, well, here's what happened today, and then they leave out some important details. And then when you're over here saying, well, I didn't realize that, they're not, they're not really going along with, uh, with truth. They just want to maintain confusion. Or sometimes they'll say some very flattering things about you. And they may say things like, no one in this world respects and honors you more than me. And you're over there criticizing me and saying ugly things. Do you know how many times I've stood up for you and you're thinking, I really don't. And so they, they try to make themselves out to be one thing and cause you to question your reality about something out. That, that's what gaslighting is all about. And you walk away thinking, well, I don't even know which end is up now. And they're thinking, good, that's the game. Or a fifth game that they commonly play is the one of projection. And projection, if you think about it in a movie uh, theater, uh, the, the, uh, the, the projector is over here and the, and the, the uh, picture is over there. In projection, you, they see in you what's going on inside of them. For example, let's suppose the narcissist is a highly uh, critical person. And so in projection, that narcissist may say, you know, I've been watching you and you're a very critical person. Or the narcissist has problems with immorality issues. And they say things like, you're not someone I can trust well at all. It's like, well, that's the pot calling hell black, but they don't really get into that part. They see in you what they don't want to have to deal with in themselves. And then if you come along and say, well, let's talk about where this fits with you. It's like, see, there you go. You're always trying to put it onto me. And so they, they uh, accuse you of the very thing that they're doing or the very thing they're struggling with. That's projection. And it creates uh, confusion which allows them to stay in the dominant kind of position. That's the name of their game. Or how about this one, number six? Many times, narcissists in their manipulation will speak in broad generalizations. Uh, as you're trying to uh, pin them down and talk with them about specific problems, they may say things like, you know, for as long as I've known you, you've had problems with insecurity. And so they make these broad statements and it's like, well, I have my moments, but that's not the sum total of everything I am. Or it may be they'll say, you know, I, I remember you telling me about uh, how you had some insecurity as a teenager and I'm seeing it right now. That's just something that's followed you for your entire life. In fact, your whole family is full of insecure people and you're just playing that out. Broad statements like that. Or uh, everyone knows that you tell lies or that you don't, uh, you don't follow through on things or you're constantly doing things wrong. And it's like, well, sometimes those kind of problems might be there, but then they turn it into these broad, uh, wide statements and it's a way of labeling you as the loser. They don't see you as being a, a mixture of pluses and minuses like we all are. Or how about this one, number seven? And that is, they may draw absurd conclusions when you're trying to discuss things. If you're trying to pin them down with uh, with some ideas about you know what's uh, what's wrong or what's concerning you, they may uh, the absurd conclusion is, you know, you just think you're perfect, don't you? You never make mistakes, do you? All you want to do is just tell me what's wrong with me, or go ahead and tell me how awful I am. Uh, that's what you do anyway, and it's an absurd kind of conclusion. You're saying, no, I was just trying to talk with you about how we were managing our schedule. And it's like, um, you know, uh, I'm sure you think that, but uh, everything you say is just wrong about me. You never can say anything nice about me ever. Uh, and I just know here we go again. And so they can get into that and you, you start talking about how that's not true. And before you know it, you're off the topic, which is what they want. 
And then how about uh, number eight? Uh, often narcissists will go into the triangulation game. Now, as triangulation goes, let's suppose you have a group and there's some strain and difficulty and they may come to you and say, you know, Bob over here was saying some pretty un unflattering things about you. I don't know what's going on, but Bob's kind of down on you. And then later on, they may go to Bob and they may say something like, this person over here, uh, she was saying some pretty ugly things about you. Uh, I, I think you need to be real careful when you're around that person. And so uh, there's another way to call it and say it. it's called let's you and him fight. And then they kind of pull back and watch you get insecure and agitated and all. Then they come back and say, you can't get along with anybody. And so they triangulate you and play you off of someone else trying to make you look like a fool. And I actually, unfortunately, I could go on and on. There are so many other games that the narcissist will play, but let's just recognize they're master manipulators. And one huge thing for you to understand, they love it when you enter into the arena with them and play the game. When you argue, when you go agitated with them, uh, when you try to explain to them about what's right and what's wrong, all they know is, hey, we're, we're, just, we're just doing this and I can play this all day long. I can play this for a lifetime because that's what they do. But this manipulative game playing illustrates one really large thing to a guy like me, and that is these people are in turmoil. Uh, they're unsettled on the inside, and they, they bring their unsettled nature to you, uh, but instead of saying, I'm unsettled, they just put it on to you. So let's conclude by saying this. The more you know and understand these games, the more determined you can be as you say within yourself and if necessary out loud, not only do I not feel the necessity to play your games with you, I'm not even going to enter into your arena. No thank you. Now I do hope that videos such as this will give you something of an education about what you're up against and in doing so that it allows you to move forward with a sense of purpose and uh, and uh, intentionality. Uh, if you'd like to go beneath the video and hit that subscribe button, that'll allow you to uh, stay in, in touch with the next videos that come along. If you would like to visit our website, we have a new one called survivingnarcissism.tv. We have a lot of articles that go along with some of the videos that we have uploaded there, and I think you're going to find it pretty interesting. We have quizzes too. It's pretty interesting to see where you rate on those. Uh, if you would like to talk with someone online in a counseling kind of setting, and many people like to do it online these days, we have a link below that you can do online counseling. And I've vetted this group and I've gotten good feedback uh, with respect to the results on that. We also have links to my video workshops and my books, and we even have coffee mugs. Now, let's keep in mind you're dealing with manipulators, uh, but it doesn't mean that you have to let them establish your pace. I'm hoping that there can be a sense in you that says, I know who I am, I know where I'm going, and I'm going to stay on my path. And if this other individual isn't going to go on the path with me, they lose. I'm going to go ahead and just be a healthy person. They get to be whatever uh, kind of person they are because it's not my job to try to change them. Stay steady and stay on your path.